JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's Daily Market Review for May the 21st. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar turned down against uh, all but one of the other G10 currencies on Thursday and during the Asian session Friday. It lost the most ground versus CHF, SEC, GBP and the Euro in that order, while it underperformed the list against uh, AUD and NZD. The greenback was... Uh, the greenback eked out some gains only versus NOC. Now, the weakening of the US dollar suggests that the market sentiment may have turned to risk on yesterday. However, the strengthening of the Swiss franc and the relative weakness in the risk linked Aussie and Kiwi point otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader investor morale, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here we can clearly see that uh, major EU and US indices uh, were a sea of green, with Nasdaq recording the biggest uh, gains. That said, appetite softened again today in Asia. Although Japan's Nikkei 225 gained, China's Shanghai Composite and South Korea's KOSPI slid, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng stayed relatively unchanged. The market chatter suggests that the improvement in market sentiment may have been due to the better than expected US initial jobless claims for last week. However, we believe that this should have had the opposite effect. After all, following the surge in both headline and core inflation in the US, as well as the Tabor talk uh, revealed in the, minutes, in the minutes of the previous FOMC gathering, this may be a step closer towards the beginning of normalization. In our view, the only indicator on the agenda which uh, may have helped ease uh, inflation fears is the Philly Manufacturing Activity Index for May, which, which uh, fell more than anticipated. With that in mind, today investors are likely to pay extra attention to the preliminary PMIs for the month coming out uh, from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. Eurozone's manufacturing PMI is anticipated to have slid somewhat, but to have stayed at elevated levels. Specifically, it is expected to have declined to 62.4 from 62.9. The services index is forecast to have increased to 52 from 50.5. This is likely to drive the composite index up to 54.9 from 53.8, confirming that with the vaccinations rollout, the euro area economy is recovering from the coronavirus pandemic at a decent pace. No forecast is available for the UK prints, while in the US the manufacturing index is expected to have ticked down to 60.4 from 60.5 and the services run to 64.6 from 64.7. Now, with ECB President Lagarde saying on Tuesday that it is essential that monetary and fiscal support are not withdrawn too soon, we believe that, we believe that improvement in Eurozone's PMIs may prove positive for European equities. That said, this may not be the case in the US, as better than expected indices may add to speculation that uh, with the US economy recovering at a fast pace and both headline and core inflation at elevated levels, the Fed may need to start thinking about scaling back some monetary policy support. Now, as for the rest of today's events, we have the UK retail sales for April, Canada's retail sales for March, and the US existing home sales for April. The US retail sales are expected to the, the excuse me, the UK retail sales are expected to have slowed somewhat, but to have still increased at a strong rate. Canada's sales are also expected to have slowed, while uh, the US existing home sales are forecast to have risen. We will also get to hear once again from ECB President Christine Lagarde. So that's it uh, from me. 
Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar which I'm hosting every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.